Hey, good morning. Yesterday is, it is Monday. Beginning of the work week, right? June 3rd. So, took the grandson up to the Adirondacks to do some trout fishing. I belong to a private club up there that we have a little over 11,000 acres. And they had just opened up the, the gates to be able to go up because they have what they call in our area, you know, the loggers, it's called a mud season. And there's a certain period in the spring of the, the year that the foresters shut down operations. And that's because they're doing more damage than good, right? And they're it, it just, it's hard on the equipment, hard on the, the land. And the foresters looking at, you know, young trees, you know, the the value of the ground, the earth. So during that time, we can't get on the club. And that's usually when the snow starts to go out. And it has it's not dry enough yet to where everything is all muddy, you know, mushy. So there hadn't been too many club members up. But we've only got like 55, 58 members. And most of them are older now. So the grandkids, they made out pretty good. My grandson, we caught a number of them that were 11, 12-inch brookies, native brookies. Catch and release, we didn't keep any. So we got back here around noon. And we were talking with a, a new customer that was dropping off a machine and well why don't you just stay tuned and we'll finish the story So, welcome back. If you didn't already know it, my name is Eric, and we do the weekday show Monday through Friday, and this is the weekday. This is Monday. And it's also available on podcasts for your listening pleasure. So, the talk today is about where you're going to get new customers, all right, and how you're going to get new customers. And we had just gotten back. I had texted... I, I had this gal leave a message Saturday on the answer machine down to the shop. And she said that we had come highly recommended and they would love to have us service their cup cadet. And it also had an issue of it wouldn't move forward or backwards. So either the dry belt came off, spring unhooked or let go could it sounds minor so it was six o'clock yesterday morning when i was listening to the answer machine on the way to go fishing so i shot a text to her because she had left her cell phone number so i just took my cell phone number my cell and i texted her from there i don't usually because we've talked about having your private cell and a business cell and some of you guys have mentioned that you can get both so you can get like one number but then you could pay so much for a secondary to make it look like it's coming from a different number um i i didn't, haven't looked into it but normally what i do is i have two cells one is my private and one is my business and i use track phone I pay $107, like, I think it was 114 this year, for the year. And if I want to add any data, I just add data, you know, five, six gig at a time. But I gave her my, I texted her from my home, my private cell, because I was headed fishing. And to my surprise, she answered right back, you know, she said that, uh, could they bring it out yesterday, Sunday? And I said, absolutely. You know, I said that 
I've taken my grandson trout fishing. But if I'm not here, feel free to leave it. And I give her the, the shop address, you know. So we got done fishing, and the the deer flies kind of got the best of my grandson. He's just a little gopher and stuff, but they were vicious. We had the deep woods off that kept the punkies off. But. So we headed out, you know, right around 11 o'clock, starting to get up to... 77 and he was getting a little riny and so we just decided to take a nice ride out through where it's cool and in the truck but when we showed up to the shop because that's where my son met me i had stopped at the shop to i had some night crawlers in the refrigerator down there and they were running a few minutes behind trying to get my grandson up and going so when we stopped there to grab my truck or grab his truck, they were there and they were trying to get the lawnmower unloaded. And his name is Bob and he's probably in his mid seventies and he's had a stroke and it's hard to understand. She can understand him, but she said it's hard to, to understand what he's trying to say. And, you know, being an EMT for almost 20 years, I, I dealt with a lot of folks that had strokes. So, I helped them get the lawnmower off the trailer because it wouldn't go frontwards or backwards. And I could feel on the pedal, there wasn't hardly any resistance on the brake pedal. So, I knew there was something in there that wasn't right. In the, in the forward reverse on the hydrostatic transmission, Something wasn't right, you know, it's it's too easy. So it's usually a belt issue. But she said, you come highly recommended. And I said, well, because I wrote back to her that, you know, we greatly appreciate her taking a chance on us to give us business. So when we got back there and I was helping Bob, one of our regular customers got out of the back of the car because they had the trailer hooked to their car. And she's like, Eric, I said, it's you. She goes, yeah. And it was her older sister. So now I'm doing, I was doing the mom and two sisters. And the mom passed away last year on us. Wilma was one of the, the nicest, well, nicest person, people you'd ever meet. Oh, and she's she's sorely missed. You know, she had the one push more and the one single cylinder Sears Craftsman that she had. That we kept going for years and years. And once we had Wilma, then the one daughter signed on, and then the other daughter signed on, and the son. We do the son, so there's three in that family. And now we're doing the other sisters, so it's four of them from one family, and they're all up my age and older. But the big thing was, is when you're getting new customers, people are listening. And if you treat your customers well, and you're not going to please everybody all the time, right? So you just try to please the most, most of the time. And that's not going to be at the demise of you, you know. You try to be, my, from where I'm coming from, I'm, my goal is to be 100% truthful and honest. I will give you my take. Now, I'm not saying that my take is right. I'm just saying you're taking it from the advice from me of knowing what parts cost, of what time it takes to do it. Is it worth it? But one of the things that I noticed, and Amos brought this up, is 
how much the value of new has jumped. You know, we used to look at a push more, and if it needed, you know, anything major done to it, it wasn't worth, you know, squat. You know, because you're lucky if you can get 50 bucks out of it. Well, when you have just a plain Jane mower, push mower, selling for 300 bucks, that now changes the dynamics of what you're willing to put into that push mower to get it going. You know, if it needs a head gasket, and it's not that big a job, you know, changing a head gasket, then it's worth it, right? Doing a, you know, complete overhaul on a push mower, I, I don't think that's there yet. <laughs> I wish it was, but. But if you've got to replace push rods, you know, on the intake, the exhaust side of the valves, you know, that's doable now. Where if you added a couple hours of your time, which ended up being 100 bucks, and then parts, let's say 50 bucks, that's still half the cost of a new push mower, right? So that changes the dynamic. So when you're being 100% truthful, you may not be looking at all things and, and making it the right decision based on what you know instead of what it is. Does that sound reasonable? But... Where we're getting our new customers is from our regular customers. And they're going out and they're knocking doors for us. And it's greatly appreciated because, you know, usually when a customer comes in and says, how's business, you know, and normally it's pretty, pretty backed up. You know. The last couple of years has been pretty quiet. So we can get yours in now, you know, with no problem. And our customers this year have stepped up and are talking to other people about getting their machines done. We even had one guy, his old girlfriend from back in high school, and he's my age. He brought her lawnmower to get fixed, to get a service done on it. I've talked about when it comes to getting new customers versus old customers. It's it's easier to retain your old customers than it is to go out and get new. So if you're one of those guys that, you know, doesn't think about what it, how much it costs and you're looking at you're the person on the other side of the counter, then you're going to spend more time and money trying to get new customers to basically put screws to. If you're not taking your customer into consideration on everything you do to their machine, then aren't you screwing the customer? See, I've got customers that have come here that went to Joe Schmo, a bigger dealer. And I told you about the one fella. $800 to tell him finally that he just needed a new battery. $800. And that wasn't the cost of the new battery. That was just the diagnostic and doing all the checks. How hard is it to throw a tester on a battery? How hard is it to make sure that the charging system is working on a battery? Because that's the two checks you would have had to make. And for 120 bucks, you could have had the battery. Well, 50 bucks for install, which it shouldn't be that much, but I'm just giving you a... So, for under 200, that would have seemed high to me. But to charge someone $800 and then still tell them they have to buy a battery? And you honestly think that customer is going to come back? You may have got them this time, but you won't get them again. 
that's what I mean by, you know, getting recommended by other customers. And that's why I tell Claude, you know, our best advertising is our regular customers that are pleased with what we do and how we do it and and the final outcome and how quick we can get them going. That is what's going to get you recommended to other people. And you need to uh, you need to learn their names and and I do farther than that because a customer to me is just a friend I haven't met. And before long I want to know their wives or their husbands, kids and you know the the big deal. I mean we're a local community. So I'm going to start wrapping this up. But the key is what I'm trying to get at that I'm hearing from customer after customer after customer that are new is that the the business that they have been going to, that's the newer generation, the next generation per se. They're not the parts manager or the sales manager or what have you. They're not there for small talk. They're not interested in that individual. It's just, here's the bill. This is it. You know, and if you question the bill, they just give you that dead stare. People want to feel like they matter. And that you're taking them into consideration. And I think that's one of the biggest downfalls of when you hire the next generation I'm not pegging you all this way just some of you all right is that it's just a job and you don't care about what the other person on the other side of the counter thinks you've been taught this is what you do you just you give them their bill collect the money or you have them sign a waiver saying that they Anything they fix on you more, they're not responsible for. Yeah, this is some dealerships that are having you sign a waiver so that if you get hurt on something they fixed, they're not responsible. I got news for you. Even if they sign that, it's not worth the ink that was written. If you want to retain good customers and you want to add new good customers then they need to be valued and i think that's probably the biggest thing that's missing these days is the customer feeling valued in the end are you taking care of them are you being honest with them and if you're not why not because now you're just spending more money trying to get new customers and after a while you know depends on location 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 but up in our area or in a rural community bad news travels fast good news is slow but bad news it doesn't take long to have it get around and if you're the one doing these things to that customer you're probably going to be the last one to hear about it because everybody's going to be talking behind your back. I don't think that's right either. And I did go to that dealership that charged my customer $800 to do a battery and talked with the owner of that one. And he was kind of flabbergasted. He thought they had done more than that. I said, no, here's the bill. Did he make it right with that customer, his old customer? I doubt it. Because they were making money, you know. Why make just 50 bucks when you can make $800, right? Comes around, goes around, folks. So on that note, you guys have a great Monday, and we'll see you here bright and early tomorrow morning. Again, thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.